North Korea's worn-out artillery shells are keeping Russia in the fight. According to the American magazine Foreign Policy, the supply of old and often unreliable ammunition from the North Korea over the past year has become one of the biggest threats to Ukraine's ability to resist the advance of Russian troops. Citing experts, it is noted that as of this summer, at least 2 million shells had been sent to Russia, many of which were old, damaged, or in some way faulty. As former U.S. State Department official and North Korean weapons proliferation expert Van Diepen noted, these are not high-quality munitions, but without them, the Russian way of warfare will be difficult to sustain. The Russian way of capturing territory is through heavy artillery bombardment, followed by advancement. Michael Kaufman, a senior fellow in the Russia and Eurasia program at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, agreed that North Korean artillery shells are not very good. But he said when it comes to artillery ammunition, quantity has its own quality. The expert calculated that it was supplies from North Korea that allowed Russia in a critical year to maintain an artillery fire advantage over Ukrainian troops at a level of 3 to 1 and higher. That is why the huge number of even low-quality weapons from the North Korea on the battlefield is causing such concern among Ukrainian military leaders and US officials, the magazine writes. Recall that in August, a report by the South Korean Defense Intelligence Agency noted that since mid-2022, North Korea has sent 13,000 sea containers to Russia that could have been used to transport weapons. It was reported that more than 6,152mm artillery shells could be shipped through the eastern port of Najin. In addition, there have been suggestions that the North Korea could also supply Russia with 122mm artillery shells, mobile anti-aircraft and anti-tank missiles. North Korea's provision of weapons has strengthened Russia's hand in Ukraine by allowing it to keep its arsenals stocked at home, Chief of Defense General Karsten Brewer of Germany said recently. It's about increasing the production of weapons for Russia's aggression in Ukraine. It's also strengthening Russia by making it possible for them to keep their stocks like they are, Brewer told. Ukraine and the United States, among other countries and independent analysts, say that North Korea is helping Russia in the war against Ukraine by supplying rockets and missiles in return for economic and other military assistance from Moscow. Moscow and Pyongyang have denied direct arms transfers which would violate United Nations embargoes. If Kyiv does receive approval from the West to use Western weapons to strike deep into Russian territory, the armed forces of Ukraine will strike 261 military facilities of the Russian armed forces, such as large weapons depots and permanent deployment points of Russian troops. This was reported by the German magazine Der Spiegel, citing analysts from the Institute for War Research. If Kyiv strikes these facilities with Storm Shadow air-launched cruise missiles, their fire damage, according to Western analysts, will significantly complicate Russian military logistics. One of Russia's most important advantages in the conflict is its ability to move troops en masse from safe areas deep within its own territory. If this advantage were to be compromised, it would significantly hinder Russian operations and increase Ukraine's chances of seizing operationally important territory, explained ISW Geodata Group Director George Barros. Earlier, U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Kurt Campbell stated that possible deliveries of long-range Atoms missiles are being actively discussed by American authorities. At the same time, U.S. State Department Representative Matthew Miller previously emphasized that Kiev does not need Washington's permission for strikes by the Ukrainian armed forces deep into Russia only if they use their weapons on their own territory. In August, the Russian Ministry of Defense demonstrated the operation of the Buk M3 anti aircraft missile system in the area of a special military operation, which intercepted and destroyed an American Atoms operational tactical missile launched by the Ukrainian armed forces.
New NATO Secretary General Mark Ruta visited Ukraine on Thursday in his first official trip since taking office and pledging continued support for Kyiv in its war with Russia. Ruta met with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in Kyiv as air raid sirens twice went off in the Ukrainian capital. The new head of NATO vowed, when he took office Tuesday, to help shore up Western support for Ukraine, which has been fighting Russia's full-scale invasion since February 2022 and has recently been on the defensive due to a relentless Russian army push in eastern regions. Ruta expressed confidence that he can work with whomever is elected president of the United States, the alliance's most powerful member, in November. That could be a key moment for Ukraine's effort to ensure continuing Western support. Zelensky said he discussed with Ruta elements of Ukraine's so-called victory plan, ahead of a NATO meeting at the Ramstein Air Base in Germany next week. The two also discussed the battlefield situation and the specific needs of Ukrainian military units. Zelensky reiterated that Ukraine needs more weapons, including long-range weapons. Hi, Mom. Yes? We have not spoken for three months. Thank you so much. I think you're still for the call on my last day of office. Thank you so much. Okay. You're very welcome. I know. Hey, happy to see you. Good to see you. You met already? Yeah. See you. Wait. See you.